hi everyone and welcome to Rebuilding Through and After Trauma, a, a podcast of healing, uh, growth and hope. So um, welcome to week four um, and delighted uh, to welcome Stephanie McMahon. So uh, welcome Stephanie um, and thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Fantastic, fantastic. So I have known Stephanie uh, for a good number of years now um, and I have seen her journey um, and it's just been absolutely, truly amazing, um, inspirational as well um, and always someone who is you know, willing to grow all the time. So what I'll do is I'll hand it over to you and just give us a little bit of a background about you and you know how you came on this healing journey um, and kind of anything else that comes up for you. Perfect. Well, thank you very much, Sharon, for letting me share my story. I'm delighted to be here and I hope you all enjoy it. Um, so I'm Stephanie McMahon. I'm married to Paddy and I'm living in Bolan with three beautiful little children. Um, they're not so little now, but they're growing so up. Um, <laughs> they grow. The time grows very fast. At the minute, I'm actually doing first first year introductions with Zoe. So the time flies. So quick. So um, fast. So fast. But um, how I got on the healing journey um, would have been back, let me see, Zoe, Mia's coming before, probably close on five years ago. So I stay at yeah. home, um, I help others, and how it kind of started, we'll say it's a long story, but to cut it short for today is, um, I used to have this little girl come into the house, she smelled divine. I asked her what was she smelling of, and she's the, ma or the granny told me it was essential oils, and I was like, Oh, essential oils. But anyway, I enrolled and um, Rosie Graney had called to the house and we just started doing an introductory to the home essential oils. And we were just doing it. I just bought them for looking after myself and my own family. And as we were going on onto the class, she just asked, would I have any interest in the emotion oils? I said, yeah, sure, go on. So I went smelling them anyway. <laughs> Excuse me, I went smelling them anyway. And there was two I just did not like. And she asked me afterwards um, if I had lost somebody. And I said, mm, yeah, why? And she said, and of course, I started to cry. And she said, it's okay. And I said, how did you know? And she said, because this is the comfort oil. And I kind of looked at her and said, this is console. So she said, anyone that usually would lose somebody wouldn't be able to smell the oil. And the other one was mm. forgive. So I lost my brother in 2011. The week before I found out I was pregnant, my first baby, would you believe? So then I really thought, so I had the essential oils in my hand. And it was only when I got the emotional oils, I was like, hmm, these are very strong. And at the time, my niece, who was Adrian's daughter, my brother that passed away, his daughter was also in the house. So I said to Rosie, I was like, this is actually my brother's daughter. I said, can I let her smell them? And of course, the one she liked was cheer. So she needed to be uplifted. Uplifted, yeah. Yeah, so it's amazing. So now I know more about the essential oils and the emotions behind them. But back then, I didn't know too much about them. So I just went on my way with the oils. And, um, and these were the was, doTERRA essential oils. The doTERRA essential oils, yeah. yeah. Um, I was using the tin home essential kits I was diffusing and um, was just going, just going on with my life. So next thing, out of the blue, I got a package in the post. I think it was like April maybe April 2019. Now at this stage, we were probably five years trying for our third child. We'd given up on like kind of on the fertility side. And we just said, you know, cause we had gone through it with our first child um, and we had Alex in straight after it. So then we had the gap and we kept trying and trying and we were having no success, but we had decided that we weren't going to go down the fertility route. Okay, you <laughs> didn't go down, you weren't going to go down that route. No, we had two yeah. happy, healthy children. And we just said what's for us wasn't going to pass us. I always, I'm kind of a firm believer of trust in the process. Yeah. So um, so that was fine. Then the packets came in the post and I had little sample vials of the emotion oils and then another little sample of a roller bottle of Clary Cam. So of course, I was interested in looking into the what they wore. Now I knew about the emotions because she'd done the emotions with me. But when I looked up Clary Cam, I had read into it and it was the hormonal blend. So it was for... Um, balancing the hormones and things like that so I started using that straight away um and where did you apply that for for what you were using that for the fertility 
for the oh, but I only got it in April. So yeah. I didn't know anything about it before this at all. I'd never looked into it. Now, when Rosie came to the house, I had asked her about fertility yeah. and she did write me a protocol, but I never acted on it. Okay. And okay. so then she sent me, she must have got a sign to send me some emotion oils and yeah, the she knew. Yeah, she knew. So that was fine. And I remember when Zoe was very small, Zoe was very small. Um, I used to ring this lady that used to do the pendulum if I had any questions or queries. And um, next thing online, I seen that you were doing a pendulum course. And I was like, I'm going to do this. So I was like, <laughs> so in I went anyway. And I remember sitting down in your room, not knowing anybody around. And you looked down between me and this other girl. And you straight away, you pointed, there's a fertility block between one of you. And I'm going to clear it. And I was like. And I remember the other girl. She yeah. has six kids. She yeah, said, I, tur- I turned to her and I said, uh, how many kids have you? Or no, I said, are you look? how many kids have you? And she said, I have six, I'm done. I was like, oh, I'm two, I have two. <laughs> I have two. Laugh two that she's a <laughs> yeah, and um, lo and behold, long story short, would you believe it? That weekend, I actually went and I did a, a Roma touch technique course in Dublin as well. But that's the weekend we conceived our third little baby. There we go. Yeah. yeah. Powerful. You know, yeah, shift the energy, you know, and, and the I have to say as well with the oils and, and everybody in law on the, the podcast anyways, anyone who's listening will know like, you know, that my journey with the essential oils, you know, they're just so powerful, even energy wise, you know, for again, clearing blocks and stuff like that or just raising the vibration even as well. So, you know, all that collective energy with the pendulum and clearing the blocks and the fertility, you know, lifted all of your energy to again, be able to to conceive very quickly and naturally which is even and fantastic naturally. yeah and having a great pregnancy as well so it was great to have the oils but I remember a friend of mine said one day and again the grief was there and she just said mm. like Steph there's a heart chakra evening over in Sharon's would you like to come and I was like yeah of course I will so over I went anyway sure I was sitting in never did meditation in my life Went in and sitting down and there I was going, Jesus, looking around the room and closing my eyes. and <laughs> A bit like Kerry, afraid of the angel cards. <laughs> <laughs> but when I when I read the angel card again, I got the book and I went, remember going up to you afterwards and I was saying, you know, I don't need to be fixed. And how do I fix this person? And how do I fix the other person? And you mm. just said to me, Stephanie, you need to fix yourself first and watch everybody else. And to this day, I still remember it. And I think it was the a great advice because yeah. I have seen as I have gone done and done the work and did like you know personal development through you and all the courses you've done I have seen the ripple effect which is just outstanding you know no matter where you go or what you do but I, I do remember trying to fix other people or how can I do this and you're like you fix yourself first and then watch watch the effects and that's huge as well when we have a loss like when we lose a sibling you know or even a parent you know what we want to do then is we want to go and help everybody and, and heal their pain um you know and 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 not hold it for for them because we don't think consciously that we want to hold them for for them but we want to make everybody else okay and really and truly and I remember that day that you came in like and I just remember your heart was so full like always so full but it was full for everybody else yeah you know um and even though you know you had you conceived and everything and the energies had shifted um it was still that thing about the more that we work on ourselves the better it is for everybody else because it becomes a ripple effect and that's exactly there you know um you know and we were even talking earlier like you know and, and always talking you know connecting uh because we were great friends now as well but uh you can tell everybody the story about Mia who is the, the baby. She's not a baby now, but anymore she's no. <laughs> <laughs> well she she'll be four in January, but it's funny wow. you say that because as as um we say when we were doing that and then COVID came and we started doing um the inner circle, the magic, and it was just magic. And yeah. um and I actually have done it twice since and everything it's just a brilliant book. And then we'll say we joined the inner circle. And then from that, then we started doing, um, you looked to do, a, or you were advertising a Reiki course. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. So I wanted more and more and more because I could see the effects of the pendulum. And then we did, you did like a February energy healing. And so then when you did the Reiki, I did level one, level two, and then I got my master's. So now I'm a Reiki master. <laughs> but Mia had a little infection in her knee before we went on holidays. So I said, Mia, would you like me to do some healing for you? 
and she was like mm, okay mom so I used to do the healing anyway and I put on my symbols and do the chokery on her and I said to her the other day I said me I said um did you miss me I was gone I'm actually gone doing another course now more energy healing and um I just said to her um something about the healing anyway and she said oh yeah mom and she put her hand on whatever she did and she said choker choker choo choo <laughs> So, and I just thought it was brilliant because she even knows like and she'd catch my hand and she'd pull it down on top of wherever she needed and she was like chuka chuka choo choo but it just made me smile because even the kids and it just for them to know that you can do it or you know to help others by just you know doing something so simple and that again is that ripple effect for them because you know, and, and it's the same for it's the same for Kelly and Eve. Like they'll always, no matter what's going on, whether it's you know maybe school or whether it's you know um something a pain or something, they'll all say, "Ma'am, can you come in and do some energy work on me, or can you send the angels?" Because that's what they've grown up around. And again, it's the same thing for you. And that's why I always say for you, you always you know, and it's not that that you said, "Oh, I'll, I'll do this, I'll do that," but you've always been divinely guided to do stuff, and you trust it. So like, you know, when we trust that process and then our children grow up around it, it's just so powerful for them um, because, again, they go on that journey. They'll go on their own journey as well, like, you know, but they'll go on that journey to say, you know, there's something else there, you know, yeah. there's something else there. And it's it's nearly a belief in it as well. But even like, let's say on that journey for change. Um, and of course, look, at, we, we can hear there was huge impacts there with the fertility you know, and the, and the grief as well, Um, you know, even environmentally wise. So obviously there's the household will lift in energy and shift in energy. But did you feel, did you notice that even other people around you, you know, benefited from, you know, some of the things that you do, either the energy work or the oils, because you do, you do share the oils. Yeah, do I do. Yeah. So I'd be a wellness advocate. I'd hold classes or you know, do, we'll say, if people needed oils or help people out with their accounts and things like that. So, yeah, no, I do, I do, do, still do the oils and share the oils. And, and I was actually in Portugal. Hmm? Yeah. Stephanie, what's it called again? Sorry, now. Steph, Steph, Steph's Wellness Talks to Moms. Okay, I, I never see the name. I just see Mia running around. <laughs> She's just <laughs> <tricky. laughs> I do I do share that. And, and sometimes as well, what I often find is sometimes something can come to knock you down and I remember it was oh maybe 18 months ago I got an anonymous letter so like when you think you're you know you think you're doing all this work and next thing somebody is trying to come and knock you down but like if I hadn't done all the personal development work or you know doing gratitude or feeling grateful for things I would have went down a big spiral hole very fast because yeah, not only did I got one that confidence Mm -hmm. yeah it really really builds your confidence and your self-esteem and mm -hmm. like I would even say stepping into my power like if I had gotten that letter back three years ago four years ago five years ago it would have really really crippled me but I literally I was able to say that's not me that's them you know mm -hmm. so I was well able to I think for from doing all this work and even for grief and everything I think it really made me a stronger person and to mm -hmm. know now the kids wouldn't know anything about the letters but at the yeah. same time, I just think, you know, the content that was in them letters, I wouldn't like anyone else to be reading them. They were absolutely horrific. And I did share it on my page as well. Slight bit of it just to make, kind of create awareness and to show people how, how to stand in your power. Yeah. And I remember that. And that's what I loved that time about, for, about that situation was that sometimes, again, we go into the fear of it and, you know, again, look at, and I suppose you, you can definitely know it if you hadn't done the work and worked on that confidence and self-esteem and all of those things that it would have knocked you. And you could imagine somebody else. And I think that's why I always share stuff and share, you know, my journey and, and share and sharing everybody else's journey now, because there is somebody sitting at home right now, or there is somebody listening to this or somebody's going to share it with somebody. And, you know, and, and might not have the work done and something like that, you know, and I know you put yourself in other people's shoes. Say, Imagine if somebody didn't have the work done, that would have been devastating yeah. for them. You know, it would have been devastating. And I think you really stood into your power that time when you, um when you posted that, you know, because it yeah. did say, look at, this is what's real. This is the reality of what people can do, you know, um, and, and how people, when you are, because you were posting all the time, empowering and inspiring people 
Um, and then obviously somebody got the backup and then just was, was sending these things. So it empowered other people then to say, well, you know what? Maybe the people have some people like that in their lives, like, you know, and you just stood into the power and just says, you know, look, if this is real, but I'm not standing for it. Yeah, definitely. Mm. But even even we'll say, I remember we'll say just doing posts like that. And even my parents would say, or mom would say, God, Steph, you got good at writing things. Like I wouldn't have been the A student in school and um, never very academic or anything like that. I would be hands on. And that's why I love doing the energy because it's all hands. And like I learned through stories and like when you help people, you remember the story. Like I don't need to remember all the, I don't know, the, the, the written work. I like yep. to do the hands on and um, see the results. I love seeing things. Um, but like mom would often say, God, Steph, you know, she definitely seen a big change because she was, you know, she'd often say, oh, Steph, you're great at writing things or you're well able to say things. So it, it definitely improved we'll say even the way I would talk to people or the way you know I'd enter it, like we'll say if somebody said something I'd flip it if it was negative or even just yeah. to kind of get in around that was big changes too yeah and again I think you know sometimes you know when we're when we're not good academically so like a bit like me I, I would be um so I'm dyslexic so again it's that thing of you know I'm better off talking like I was always good at talking so like you know you don't tell you in school that you can make money you know or you can get a job of talking <laughs> but again always I was always intuitive and that's what I've always you know kind of you know sensed from you even at the start when you came to the pendulum course you know um and when I met you I think I actually did I meet you it's the first time at an oils did I do a, a, a talk at the oils in Loch Grey I was so drawn to you that day and actually I might have only got the oils that September and I remember going to my first oil event it was on in Lockery and you did do a talk and you were doing it on suicide and I kept staring at you if only you could see me and say I was stalking you and then I went to the bathroom and I seen you and I was like going oh Jesus Christ what am I going to say to her <laughs> You know, but I just felt drawn and I think that's it too like you're always felt drawn to things but now I'm aware yeah. of feeling drawn to things where beforehand I thought oh god if she sees me I was saying you know you'll judge me or this but now I'm like no there's a sign Do you know follow your signs yeah. and things like that where beforehand I was like oh god I, I don't know I now I know it was a connection but back then I yeah. thought I was just being weird <laughs> <laughs> and I remember that I remember there was actually a couple of connections there that night and and I remember you um and it's it's really funny because like you know and it is like we're all energy we're all energy and like we'll connect with some people we won't connect with others um but when we do make those connections and of course look at obviously you know you know yourself when when we are doing energy work and some people will have healing done and some people won't have, you know, even started on the journey. There's nearly that awkwardness of like, oh, Jesus, you know, um, do, do I go over to you? Do I say hi? Um, but again, it's that thing of trusting, trusting in the in the in the process. And like when I say about being into uh, intuitive, it's like even when that heart meditation came up, you've never done meditation. Never. But you went to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now, would you believe I listen to a meditation every night? Every night. Every yeah. night. And if I wake up in the morning and I wake before my alarm, I'll plug in another meditation. And if you and said do you that just to me, make any meditation, go, or do you do something that you know is aligned to kind of what's going on at that time, or do you just? So I would still have all the ones that we've done with you with the inner circle. So I'll go into YouTube and I again I'll trust the process. I'll swipe up my finger and I'll press. Tell me which one I need to listen to tonight and I'll press stop. And then that's the one I listen okay. to. So again, it'll be guided, like whichever one I'm to listen to, I listen to. Okay, wow, wow, trusting, mm -hmm. yeah. And that, yeah. and that's really when we do that. And people people can do that as well. Actually, there's a, a thing with a book as well that you can do. Let's see if I've got a book here now that I can show people. There's a great thing with the book as well. It's about trusting. So sometimes when we get... This is uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. So sometimes when we get a book, like, you know, and we want to, like, I just want something. I just want information. I just want a, a quick, like, you can do the angel cards, obviously. But a good trick with the book, if anybody has never done it before, 
it's knock on the book three times. So you're putting the energy into the book. Um, and it's a bit like what you do with flicking to say, okay, you ask the question, like what, what uh, chapter in the book or what do I need in this book today um, or whatever situation is going on. And then you flick through the book and then whatever page comes up, that's your awareness. That's what you need for today. That's what you need that's to do. That's what you need to see. So like sometimes there's so much pressure. People put so much, remember, force negates. So more force than something, the whole mind goes a bit like crazy. So it's like when we can just say, okay, I'm going to trust the process. What do I need today? Do a flick, do a tap on the book three times if it's if it's inspiration that you're looking from from a book and um, but you don't have time to read the whole lot of it. Um, and then that brings us into a calmness and then we get the the information and the knowledge like that we need so you know um for you to be able to trust that that yeah this is the action meditation that i need you know you're just so relaxed into it every word is is going deeper and deeper yeah and i think as you said when you want to when you're asking the book what i need to see you'll actually read you'll get a little bit of like guidance as to where you want to go or what you want because sometimes you just want that little extra push and when you see it there then it's kind of like go for it you know just go yeah Yeah, absolutely now I do know as well um because obviously I follow you um that you do have a morning routine you have a a kind of a routine that you do in, in the morning yeah so back in June so I had done your um hypnosis in was it October I started and I wouldn't have I would have thought I wouldn't have had a lot of weight to lose and but by doing the right, hypnotherapy right. so that's we'll say so sometimes I listen to the hypnotherapy meditations um I don't know, do you call it hypnotherapy meditation or well recordings so the hypnotherapy recordings or I do the meditation either or so I still have them all but I set myself a challenge love doing challenges um but now again when you do the challenge you'll stay at it but in June, I did a 30 day challenge, but I also listened to the hypnotherapy recordings. And like I lost over a stone weight, but like even the feeling of like feeling good in your clothes, like so I would have had fairly good confidence. But at times in you're confident when you're out and you're dressed, but when you're getting dressed and you're putting on a pair of jeans and you feel like you're sticking out or you kind of go sick. But anyway, it's like. <laughs> It's not censored. You're okay. <laughs> it's for over eating. <laughs> not so bad. <laughs> I could have said it a lot worse. Person, it? <laughs> yeah, but you do feel you do feel much more confident. So I you lost that muffin top and you know all of them things. And even when I went to on holiday to Spain, um, I even kept up the walk. And so I do like to get up in the morning like that. If I wait before my alarm, I'll stick in a recording like as in the earbuds and um get up do the exercise do a little bit of journaling and even the gratitude I write it down or you know what I set myself a few little steps what I'd like to do for the day or what I'd like to get done and the day runs smooth now there is a day I won't do it um you know a day if I feel sluggish or tired or you know I haven't been as consistent as I had been but I will get back into it again but the, the feeling of just so much lighter but the day runs the day runs much better when you're up that few minutes earlier than normal and you're sending that energy out you know first thing in the morning as well like you know so um like even now you know with the energy work with reiki i always tell people you know if you have symbols if, you, if you're you know um level one level two or level three you know before you get up out of the bed in the morning like put on your symbols get that energy sent out there same thing with gratitude, same thing with, you know, the journaling, um, you know, even with Sinead's journaling and stuff like that. It's to get that energy out there for, you know, miracles, for a beautiful day, for a wonderful day, for stress uh, free day, you know, um, you know, so it, and I, I do all, when I was when I was watching you, it was great to actually see somebody so structured online. So sometimes we're all doing it. I know I'm up at five and I'm and I'm doing it in, in the background. Um I'm not I definitely won't be posting any pictures of me at five o'clock in the morning. So <laughs> don't ask for them. <laughs> so but you know like it is great to see like you know you were up there and you were showing a bit of your routine. And it's great for people to see because you know um when we are consistent and we keep doing these things all the time, you know, and um, they become positive behaviors we might come out of it, but that thought is still there that I'm going to get back into it. Because that's exactly what you said. You said, 
you know, I haven't been consistent, but I'm going to get back into it. So it's just that. And the want, you know, the want is there as well. But it's even good for the kids to see you doing the exercise. Absolutely. You know, you don't just get up in the morning and go straight out to work. Mm-hmm. You know, you're getting up early and you're doing your routine and, you know, they can see you doing it too. Do you know? And actually, there was times even on, I'd share with me and might get up and you'd be like, oh, God. But yet you're looking, I'd let her go there and I be, could be doing a plank or doing something and she's going in under my arms. And you're like, stay going, stay going. Do you know? Yeah. But it's good too. Do you know? I mean, sometimes, you know, maybe she just needed. It's like busy lives. Like, you know, we've all got busy lives. You know, people are busy. Um, But it's just good when you can see that, look, at, I can fit it in, even if they're jumping on top of me, you know? Yeah. So we believe use them as weights. <laughs> yeah. And you mentioned the journal. I mentioned it too. Would you believe I would have never journaled ever until I did Sinead's course, actually. So yeah. that was the first time I did the journal and even just doing it or writing it down. And I actually got a new one there at the weekend. And Zoe's like, Mom, where did you get the journal? It's a really nice one. So, like, I would have never known what a journal looked like. And you I know, think so she's 12. Thing- yeah, absolutely. I think the good thing, and it's good, it's great for Zoe as well, like, you know, because they can write down their little thoughts and stuff when they see you doing it. Mm. And then you have the awareness. But the, I think the one good thing about Sinead's course is, you know, journal is, is so broad, like, you know, people call it some scribing, they call it journal, and, and they say, you know, write down this, write down that, right? And then you get to that point, and you're like, I'm going to write everything that's in my head. <laughs> yeah. Here, here, my hand gets sore. Again, I said I wasn't a writer, but like literally your hand just goes and you're like, oh. Yeah. And I think with Sinead's course, because it's so guided, mm-hmm. it's not so overwhelming, you know, yeah. and you just don't feel like, you know, like, yeah, you can you can have a, a brain dump, like, you know, on the on a journal, like, but hers is just so guided that it's like, you know, um, takes a lot of that kind of pressure off to what should I be writing you know so definitely very easy to follow that's what I found very easy I must actually um I'll share it I'll share it later as well um or tomorrow because yeah it's definitely a great thing once you kind of know and you get into it then and you want to write down because like Jesus I've got 78,000 thoughts a day I need to get some of them out you know only you know we only catch five percent of them 95 is playing the story so it's like you know what happened yesterday what happened and if we can get that down the piece of paper out of the head it doesn't mean that it takes it away it just means it, it makes it feel that little bit lighter you know to, to let other things in so uh yeah so i'll Sinead, i'll give you a shout out there now and i will um post that for you tomorrow and all for anybody who just might be interested in it, because it's it's a lovely, it's a, I think it's a self-help one now anyway, or a self-learn one now as well anyway. So it'll be fantastic for anyone who wants to do it. So Stephanie, tell us if you had a little nugget for anybody here um, or any of the listeners um, about, you know, on your healing journey, you know, something that really, you know, um, impacted you um, and that created a lot of the change, what would it be? My bit of advice would be, I would say it, and we said it a few times today, is just trust. Trust the process. Trust the flow. I would even say trust the signs. Become aware of signs. You know, people think you're cracked when you see something, but I would even ask for signs, you know, if I want a sign. And actually, even it was only probably three weeks ago, something popped up on Facebook. And again, we're going to talk about Sinead. She had told me about a beautiful course she was doing last year. Why don't you do it? And I said, no, 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 not the time. I'll wait till next year. Wait till Mia goes to school. And um, I just, again, I said, send me a sign if I'm ready to do this course. And again, I didn't want to be going doing courses, lots of, you know, writing and everything. And um, the sign came anyway, and I'm a devil for numbers. And I'm enrolled in the course. So I have one mm-hmm. month done and I have seven months to go. So I am learning to be a bioenergist. So yes. trust the process. Trust That's the what process. I would say. And, yeah, and, and do it now. It. Don't wait. Yes, I was just going to I was just going to say it because it is that thing of yeah. I'll wait till the kids get, you know, going to school or I'll wait till I'm thinner or I'll wait till I'm this and I'm waiting till that. Do it now. Isn't that kind of like yeah. when when you're in that energy of it, it'll always work mm-hmm. out. Or say yes and worry about it later. This is it. Yeah, and that's what what's yeah. what Richard Branson, isn't it? He said, uh, if an opportunity <laughs> comes, yeah, I think that's probably me telling you now. <laughs> Never trust a quote from Sharon. <laughs> Just say yes um, and do it. Yeah. So he says, if there's any it is it is Richard Branson, I think. He said, if if an opportunity comes into your life, say yes 
and learn how to do it later. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's. <laughs> I think that was my inner circle days that I was like, uh, I, I, well, I remember this quote now. I don't exactly know who said it. Well, I learned the bit I needed to learn. Say yes. Exactly. Say yes. And that's it. It's it's like say yes and, and learn the rest later, you know, because yeah. it will always flow. And again, another thing on that as well, I would say trust the timing, you mm. know, and um, we can tell ourselves, no, this is not the time. No, no. But if something keeps coming up and it's repeating and if you're seeing a person all the time, I remember one person actually came to me before and said, you know, Sharon, I've been seeing you since 2017 <laughs> everywhere. And then they didn't go to me like till 2000 and well, what are we? Yeah, to, to, um, 2023. And she's like, oh, I've been seeing you everywhere. I've been, you've been popping up since 2017. I'm like, well, you took a long time to get to me. <laughs> but that's it. The signs kept coming up. All I kept seeing was the course being advertised. And I was like, oh my God. But it yeah. kept popping up. And I was like, is this? And again, I went to my pendulum and I just asked, is it the right time? And of course yeah. it was. <laughs> because a lot of people say, oh, that's Google. That's Google now because you were talking about it. You know, it's, and it, and it comes with a feeling as well. It does come with a feeling. We do have to, because obviously Google is listening to us and it will post anything that we want to post. But it's that feeling. It's that feeling that said, yeah, you know what? It is the right time. Mm-hmm. And then we go with it. Well, Stephanie, thank you so, so much. Um, You can mention your page again. <laughs> Very bad. It's Steph's Wellness Tots to Mums. There's tots days you'll see mums. nothing and there's days you'll see everything and there's days you could see anything. <laughs> a mixed it's bag it's good <laughs> what it is and look at you you have stuff up there anyways and again you know if anybody is you know here's heard something about the oils if there's any grief there you know there is oils and stuff out there um for every walk of life you know um and stephanie will have has all the information and the knowledge there to help and if she doesn't she'll find out so that, that's for sure um, so thank you so much, Stephanie. Um, and look at this, look on the journey. I look at with your family and all the people that you're going to help. Um, you know, they're, they're blessed. And that's all I can I can really end it on that. They're just so blessed to have you. Um, and I look, look forward to our journey together. Thank you very much, Sharon. Thanks so much.